Welcome back, baseball fans, to the 69, 70, 71, 72 Carryover League draft prep. Uh, today, what we're going to do is we're taking a look at the the league from a from looking at the data of inventorying the players who are currently in the league, uh, which year they are in the league, and considering if they can be improved as a possible uh, draft choice instead of adding a new player for that year. Uh, meaning that each team starts with 12, 12 guys, like one of 12 right here for Arizona, for instance. And so their draft is eight rounds. You get your 13th through 20th players, except in the case when you improve a player, you're stuck at that same number. And so when the draft ends, some teams will have 20 guys, some teams will have 19, 18, 17. You don't want to be that team, because then you're going to have to add three pretty lousy players to your roster, whatever you can scrounge up of the leftovers. But it could be impactful if you find that uh, one of your existing players uh, makes a significant enough improvement to improve the card before the card has to disappear. So let me explain here. We're gonna take a look first at the Arizona team. And it's a group of six players in this one box here. In the column E, it's empty. And that means it's the existing year of 1969. The missing year is the year that card is. So the 69, Bleffrey, Popovich, Boswell, Dobson, Reagan, and Bouton card are in my league. And over here, I'm considering, do they get better in 70, 71, or 72? And for the second set, you notice the middle four is missing. And my, I, the idea is, were they better the year before in 69, or in the future in 71 or 72? And then lastly, for the two guys at the bottom, the missing spots are here and here. Were they better in the previous two seasons, and for some reason were drafted into the 71 card, or are they better in 72? 72 is the untapped new season we're adding, the 69, 70, 71, 72 league. So what I did, by the way, while you're looking at this, and I'll be going down in this box right here, over here, this simply this is simply an alphabetical look at all the players in the carryover league currently, sort of by team over there. It's just an incidental uh, bit of information that we'll be scrolling down as I do this analysis. I also have the uh, baseball reference here available to do some quick research. Now, the first thing I can say is this is not good news for the Arizona Diamondbacks because I said that I would highlight a year where any other dozen players gets shows improvement and no one is highlighted. That's not good. That means that they're gonna have to rely on adding players 13 through 20, uh, two years at a time, and just simply hope there are good free agents to plug the remaining holes in the roster because they can't improve the team internally. That's not a good bargain if you're an expansion team. Maybe if you're a superstar team like Oakland or Cincinnati or Baltimore or Pittsburgh, if you've got a great roster, it's not a big deal that you're not going to improve it because you already have the superstars on it. So there's nothing to really analyze for Arizona, unfortunately. I'm just going to skip over them. The other expansion teams, I've already looked through this, have uh, some good um, options, and we'll get to that. So this is going to scroll down in by team alphabetically. So the next team is Atlanta. And you see Atlanta they certainly are not reliant on acquiring talent in the draft. What's scary here <laughs> is that Hank Aaron can get even better. Rico Cardi, you know Rico Cardi at 342 in 69. He can get better. Jack Hyatt is a solid catcher. He could be a full-time starting catcher if you take a 71 card. For some reason, uh, Felix Mian got into the league with a 71 card, and would you believe it was the worst of his four years? This may have been the case where they needed a second baseman, and they only had a 1971 spot left 
and they were forced in year one to take a 71 Mion card. They can correct that mistake by blowing a draft choice and picking one of these other three years, which he's also better. Mostly he's better defensively. So Atlanta is looking good for this analysis. The next is Baltimore. Uh, 70 is the year Baltimore wins the World Series. They just are the defending champ. They just beat Cincinnati in the previous World Series we just saw. But if they want to consider upgrading Paul Blair, Davey Johnson, and Dave McNally, the rich get richer. Davey Johnson has a couple options, 70 and 71. And Jim Palmer has a 72 option. Um, the fact that the rich get richer, and even if they don't have guys available because their farm system has been raided by other teams, they can improve internally in these years. 69, the cupboard's bare, mostly because they have six 69 guys in here already. And there's no magic bullet to fix uh, the 69. The only 69 player in Baltimore's box, I believe, is Elrod Hendricks. And unfortunately for Baltimore, they have like three left-handed catchers to pick from. Clay Dalrymple, Johnny Oates, and Elrod Hendricks. All right, moving forward, Boston. Reggie Smith, um, that would be a significant improvement because he's an outstanding 69 card offensively and defensively, and he improves in 70. Romo is a relief pitcher in 71, and it's not a significant improvement. Not a big deal for Boston here. We'll just keep moving. The Expos. Good. This is an expansion team playing in that division with another expansion team, Ohio players, Cleveland and Detroit. If Detroit were to slip and slide, um, they have Expos can find guys to improve. And improving Ron Fairley, that's, a, I mean, he had a great year in 69, but the fact that his 70 years better, um, Rusty Staub, who You'll have Rusty Staub maxing out his Expo tenure before he gets traded to the Mets. They're not going to trade him to the Mets sooner than that. Bill Stoneman's a, a very good ace, and the fact that they have a 71 card, they'll basically have him for at least five years when they upgrade to the 72 guard. All right, the California Angels. Boy, this is, isn't good. They were the first, they had the first overall pick in the draft. They're planning on unloading Messersmith, Jim Fregosi, and ultimately they want to end up with Nolan Ryan and Bill Singer. And, you know, cross your fingers, you know, on guys like uh, Mickey Rivers, Leroy Stanton, I don't know. Um, Clyde Wright. Clyde Wright will help this team. Uh, they're going to develop an a excellent pitching staff. The offense will be shaky. And they're not getting much help. The Cubs. Now, this is good to see. In the 69 box, Kessinger's a little bit better. The reason this is also good to see it, a 69 improvement, is that the 1969 box is the smallest number of players because um, eight, or excuse me, six times 32 is 192. 192 players have already been drafted out of this box. To find that if the Cubs simply said, man, there's not a lot of talent left in 1969, why don't we just improve Don Kessinger? They could do that. So that gives them flexibility. The White Sox, this is great news for a team that is really, really struggling to keep up with Kansas City and Minnesota. But another highlight is orange. When I highlight with orange, I'm indicating that it should definitely be done. It shouldn't be, I, I'm expressing that you really, really should do it and it should be a first round pick. And that would be either year for Wilbur Wood, 71 or 72. Let's bring up Wood here just to take a look. Wilbur Wood. And when we do this, There you go. A 191, a, a whip of 1 and 105, and 191 and 251 ERAs. Now, Strat in the addendum says you could pitch this guy on two days rest. 
which is a is that would be I've never done that before. I've ne I mean, I could certainly make it happen if I wanted to have Wilbur Wood pitch on two days rest. Uh, sure, maybe I will do that. Um, if, if that makes the White Sox more competitive, um, it would be one of the most... Um, in this era, there aren't any radical rule changes like there are in the Fall League when fringe players like Roger Freed and Manny Mota and uh, Bavacqua all had 390 hitting seasons and I uh, have a limited use of a player. Wilbur Wood is a, did he go to the Hall of Fame? Can't remember, no he didn't. But three-time All-Star. But that's not fringe by any, any stretch. That's, that's an incredible accomplishment. 49 starts in 1972, so I might as well have him pitch Take the 72 wood, and he'll be the first pitcher in my experience to pitch on two days rest in a in a baseball season. So, and not only that, if they want to, they could exercise trades of Tommy John. They could also make a trade for Dick Allen to get him and his 72 season into Chicago land. And they would have assets to deal, um, particularly in 72. If you wanted to acquire, let's say, 72 Wood and 72 Allen, you could offer 72 Carlos May, Bradley, and Forster, who are currently better than the current cards. So, suddenly, the future is not as bad as I thought it was for the Chai Sox. And when you think about it, and let's take a look at the 72 White Sox and look at war. There we are, my friends. The two best players on their team are 10-3 and 8-6 war. That's almost 19 points of war from two guys. And then it drops down to Bradley at 5. He's the MVP, I believe, right? Dick Allen, 72? Yes, he's the MVP with a 10-23 with uh, 1023 OPS so it will eventually happen um, but again this is 69 70 71 72 so we have four years to till that happens and while I have Dick Allen up here he is currently a Philly and so if the Phillies decide oh yeah let's just get rid of Dick Allen we don't need him anymore you better make sure you're, you're compensated um, he travels from Philly to St. Louis to the Dodgers before he ends up with the White Sox so it's worth considering allow, just allowing this to play out. Let let him play on Philadelphia one more year is what I what I is what I think I'm going to do. Because 72 wood will be a significant improvement and then they can look forward to I mean you know step by step get trade Tommy John in, in year 2, trade for Dick Allen in year 3. So at least the White Sox have a plan now. Okay, enough of them. The Big Red Machine, uh, Bobby Tolan, slightly better than 69. That's amazing, because he's an incredible 70 card. Uh, the, the 70 team that lost to the Orioles in the World Series, they have two more cracks with that core group, and Tony Perez will get a little better, and Wayne Granger will get a little better. I'm not really concerned about 71 and 72 yet. Cleveland's flexible. Um, they have a lot of moving parts, too. They want to trade Sam McDowell to get Gaylord Perry. Um, Cardinal moves from Cleveland to Milwaukee to the Cubs in a two or three year period. So moving him makes a lot of sense. Duke Sims moves all around the league. Louis Tiant's best year is with the Red Sox in 72. Hey Boston, what are you going to give us for him? Larry Brown's just an internal improvement there. Cleveland also wants to acquire Buddy Bell from the Rangers who had the right still. All right, Colorado Rockies. And then I'm going to pause at this and take a break. Colorado Rockies. Uh, we saw how Arizona had no options. The Rockies have plenty of options. So if during this expansion where um, in the 70s expansion when we had Seattle and Toronto, we had 28 teams, those expansion teams did a little bit better because remember you had 50 more cards 
to be redistributed throughout the league. You don't have that luxury in this era. So all these expansion teams are a little worse. So the fact that you that out of your 12 guys you're bringing back, you have an opportunity to improve five of them. Five of your core 12 could be improved. Now, you could only do two per year, obviously. So two of the 71s, a 72, 70, and a 69. So even if your box looks like you got crappy guys in it, make your 12 better. This is like where I was saying you could end up at the end of the draft with a 17-man roster. And then uh, find some guys on the street design to fill in the holes, like backup catcher, uh, utility infielder, um, uh, fourth man in the bullpen. The, kind of the, the, the least most important roles on the team. All right, let's move on. Detroit, um, trying to get back to a World Series um, from 68, 84. And um, they see some reinforcements coming in 71 and 72. Nothing in 69 or 70. The fact that Lolich, right, you get to extend him for two more years. And Norm Cash, this is great because Cash is getting up there in age. The fact that he bounces back in 71, you know, he's probably 35 years old or around then. Let's, let me, uh, oops, didn't want to do that. How old is Cash in 71? Man, he's going to be old, yeah. He's 37 years old, and he has a 903 OPS year. And when you look at Cash, that's his highest OPS year, probably, of since 61, <laughs> which he didn't win the MVP. Oh, never mind, 1961. Yeah, you're not going to win the MVP in 1961, sorry. But, <laughs> I think we all know why. Um, yeah, Norm Cash at age 37, 32 bombs, 283, 372, 531. 12th and MVP voting. So that really helps Detroit to get that extended mileage out of one of their uh, core players. Al Kaline in 72. That's excellent. How old is Kaline? Uh, let's look at the 72 Tigers. A quick, quick way to get there. 37 years old as well. Aging just like fine wine. So Kaline's number, he's 849 OPS with 313 batting average. 24th in MVP voting. So, that's good news for Detroit. Um, we'll go Florida, then we'll call it, because they're an expansion team. Um, so, Florida, again, like Colorado, and more fort fortuitous than Arizona, they have three guys. Now, this Chico Ruiz isn't much of a big deal. <laughs> um, the Bergmeier and Davalillo ones are kind of good. Uh, let's look at Davalillo and see why it's worth improving him to 72. Oh, well, he hit 318. That's why, he hit 318 instead of um, 265, I think. And what is Devilio? He's 70. Okay, and that concludes Florida. Um, moving forward, uh, we're gonna pick up with Houston. Houston, you'll see a color change on one of these blocks, um, has a couple guys in 72. Actually, it's three different color. You can see this is orange. Jim Wynn gets moderately better in 72. So we have Sedano's rookie card, which is good for a rookie. It's like a 290 card, and he's a three in center field. But by 72, he's a one in center field, and he hits 319. So instead of waiting two years for that to happen, you might want to get Sedano at the height of his power sooner than later. And lastly, <laughs> under Joe Morgan, the reason this is red is simply a reminder that he plays for the Reds. And um, that will be a future, but it's not going to happen now because, again, we are in the 69, 70, 71, 72 carryover league, and Houston's not giving away Morgan yet. That will happen in due time. So... Next up is Kansas City Royals. They have a bunch of talent coming up all over the place. They're going to have Mayberry, and they're going to have Cookie Rojas, and Paul Shaw, and Roger Nelson. 
Even before Brett arrives, this team could put a World Series caliber roster together, as crazy as that sounds. Brett will arrive by 74, I believe. Um, uh, Pinella was, I believe, the 69 Rookie of the Year, or led rookies in 69 and hitting, and he gets better in 70 and 72. Two shots of doing that. And much like I mentioned Cedeno, his prowess in center field in 1970 is pretty similar to Otis and Cedeno are similar. And Otis's range and arm come to fruition by 71. So if, if you're in a hurry and say, hey, let's get the let's have the future happen now, the, the Royals are rich enough to burn a draft choice and improve Amos Otis. The Dodgers. They're gonna be making a lot of deals in the offseason. Uh, Mari Wills 70 card. It, it seems like Mari Wills is going to be traded anyway because they're going to move Bill Russell to shortstop. Mari Wills has a couple of suitors for him. Shortstops are going to be moving around in the draft. Um, now, what's interesting is Osteen going from 69 to 72 and getting better. They could have a four man rotation of Sutton, Messersmith, Osteen, and John, and they could have that for four years. And that would put them perennially at the top of that division, particularly without the Cincinnati Reds being in that division. Oh, and by the way, Jim Brewer is orange, meaning use a first round pick to improve the 72, because he has no on base on his card. Right-handed hitters, right-handed hitters have no on bases off of his card in 72. You can't do better than that as a left-handed pitcher, period. Moving on to Las Vegas. Some, similar to Colorado, other than that Las Vegas has not been as successful as Colorado. Las Vegas is the dregs of baseball, probably the 32nd team, the worst team. And if the assumption is there's no talent coming in, you have these 12 guys, you might as well... Ken Berry is a the best defensive center fielder in baseball, and he hits really well in 72. Blue Odom is great in 69, and you can ink him for four more years. Woody Fryman has a phenomenal 72. Of course, you can only do two of these three moves, unfortunately, for this team. Tommy Davis, best year, 71. You might as well ink that one. And you got your choice of Jim Rowland. So basically, it's one, two. It's going to be, unfortunately, only four guys that they can improve, which means that in the draft we'll end up with uh, 16 players. <laughs> 12, four of the 12 get improved, then four more guys get you to 16. Then they gotta put four empty uh, holes out there. But that's alright, they stink anyway. At least it's good to have, you know, these guys be good. The Brewers. Hegan's got a couple good cards. Mincher, I think he might be traded too. A lot of teams are, would seek uh, left-handed pull hitter like Mincher and Phil Roof modern improvement in 72. This is a long rebuild or not even rebuild. This is a long build from Milwaukee. The Twins World Series window and we have two guys particularly I'll Tony Oliva to think that 71 Oliva he's not even a one in right field anymore. So he's a one in 69 but in 71, he's got average and power that it, his best year of OPS, period. So if they're trying to win the World Series, you might as well, you know, flip all the switches Put if you're going to push your chips in the table. The 72 Cot is interesting. In seven, uh, Cot might be dealt, or they might do the crazy thing and deal Jim Perry. They, they're trying to get Burt Blylevin. Burt Blylevin will have a longer shelf life than Jim Perry, right? Because Blylevin will pitch all the way through the end of the 70s and into the 80s. Jim Perry's at the end of his rope. It could be that Jim Perry is sent to Portland instead of Jim Cott, and they go with Blylevin, Cott, Oliva, even Paranowski in, improving in the bullpen. So the Twins can do a lot of these win-now moves. We talked about them maybe trading Rich Reese, but ironically, they might want to hold on to Rich Reese now and trade Jim Perry. Jim Perry was a 20-game winner in 69. But Blylevin you're going to have for the whole decade and is just as good as Jim Perry. 
and Rich Reese at 322. And he can replace Ken Urbick's spot. Killebrew can still have that first base, third base option, or DH. And plus, you don't necessarily want a right-handed hitting first base when there's a 4E5. So the Twins have things to think about, and it's going to be a really, really important draft for this, for this team. Next up are the Mets. And the Mets have a lot of moves to make. <laughs> it's funny we get these teams back-to-back. -back, but no two teams have a more important draft than the Minnesota Twins and the New York Mets. This is 1969. The Miracle Mets. They got to make it happen now or they're going to lose these guys. They're going to lose the 340 hitting Cleon Jones. Well, they'll, they'll still have him, but he'll never hit that again. Seaver will have more great years. Kuzman starts to decline slightly. Tommy Ag starts to... Hey, has a one-year a one -year improvement in 70. Tom Seaver, believe it or not, of all these years, 71 is his best year. So that might be similar to what the Twins do by improving one of the guys in the rotation and making him even better. And then Garrett and Foy are just incidental. They are not going to make much impact if they get improved. The Yankees. Well, McAndrews and this nice. This is a real theft. Late in the draft, last year's draft, uh, 69 Jim McAndrew was snuck into the draft. The Yankees stole him from the Mets because the Mets had filled up their ro roster spot. And that's a shame because it seemed like it was just a one-year player, but McAndrew actually pitches well all the way through to 72 and slightly beyond. So that's a nice theft that the Yankees can reinforce for four, uh, three seasons to go along with Fritz Peterson and Mel Stottlemyre. Jack Aker is a high-quality closer in 70 to replace the departed Rich Gossage. And even Roy White, who has a pretty good 70 card in the league, has a high on base cards in 69 and 71. Oaktown, the Oakland A's, the dynasty is beginning. 69, 70, 71, 72. I mentioned uh, previously how, really, the 71 world champion excuse me, the 72 world champion A's, when you look at a, the core group here, Bando, Green, Jackson, Hunter, Torres, and uh, Campanaris, Rudy Tennis, they actually have better years in some combination of 69, 70, and 71. For whatever reason, they didn't get to the World Series until 1972, but a lot of that has to do with the Twins winning the American League West and the Orioles winning the American League East. Catfish Hunter has his best year in 72, as indicated by the orange. And knowing we already have Vita Blue's best year, 71, that one two punch would accelerate that dynasty. I mean, can you imagine Vita Blue and Catfish Hunter? That would now be the top two pitchers in baseball, replacing Seaver Kuzman, if you upgraded to Hunter's 72 card. Rudy's bat stays the same, but he beca he becomes the gold glove outfielder by 72. And Bob Locker is just a bullpen reinforcement. Okay, next expansion team, Ohio players. The good news is, is that this core pitching of Al Downing, Doc Ellis, they can be improved. But you got Rudy May, Don Wilson... You're going to have this rotation if you want for the next four years if you don't make trades, and I doubt they will. They're going to hold on to these guys, and that should make them competitive to have four good, solid starting pitchers. In the last season, Rudy May was in the bullpen, but it, it might be time to put him in the rotation. The rest of this team is going to get, be weaker. So the strength of the Ohio players moving forward will be their starting pitching. Next up, the Phillies. Now, this is not going to turn into the Mike Schmidt, uh, you know, the all-star Phillies of the mid-70s that were winning the National League East. It's not going to happen yet. We're not quite there. Um, but we have improvement options. And again, this is interesting. Um, Dick Allen, we, we talked about him being the MVP in 72 for the Chai Sox. Now, this is where, I, as the overseer of this league, 
I'm simply not going to let the Phillies improve him to that 72 card. Because that sort of changes baseball history, in my mind, too much. Another note is that that 69 card of Dick Allen is actually pretty good. Let me bring it up again. I know we had it earlier, but I want to look at the OPS between the two years. Because 69 Dick Allen did not play a full season. He, he, had, he has an OPS of 949. 72 is 1,023. 32 homers in 69, 37 in 72. It's close enough that I don't want to um, give the Phillies that advantage, particularly when the Phillies are the beneficiaries of Steve Carlton always playing for them and not departing to play for the St. Louis Cardinals in 69, 70, and 71 which is a sore spot in the Cardinal organization, that um, the Phillies got that advantage. So I'm not gonna give the Phillies another advantage by letting them have this Dick Allen, unless they're willing to trade him now for a King's Ransom to the White Sox. Um, Rick Wise is interesting here. I'm still debating whether Rick Wise and Steve Carlton should be teammates since they were traded for each other. Um, one idea was to have Rick Wise traded to the Cardinals for Kurt Flood. And as in a separate trade, when Kurt Flood was traded, he did not report to his future team. So that could be the instant karma between the Phillies and the Cardinals if I replace the, the Carlton Wise trade with a Flood Wise trade. Pittsburgh. Okay, winners of the 71 series. Similar to Oakland, they have a lot of their core already in place. One of their core, Stargell, has his best year in 71. I believe he has 48 home runs. We saw what another guy who had 48 home runs, Frank Howard, was the American League MVP in the Summer League. If Stargell's card gets improved and he wins most valuable player in the National League, that's putting a lot together there. The Pirates are probably going to the World Series or be close to it. Hard to believe you can improve Roberto Clemente in 70. 72, Oliver starts to his, uh, his 300 seasons. Back in 69, 70, 71, he's hitting like 285. But he hits, starts hitting 372. And Justy becomes a more reliable closer. So there's a lot of key moves the Pirates can make. All right, an expansion team, Portland. Um, Belanger, is, he becomes a one at short. And that in and of itself is always a consideration for improvement if you value defense that highly at that position, shortstop. Um, a lot of these other guys, again, just like the Colorado Rockies, if you're projected to be a poor team, you might as well take the assets you already have, your 12 guys, and bump them all up. Um, they can bump up one, two, three, and two of these 371s they can bump up. So they could bump up five guys. If they did Boswell 69, Culp Reichert 70, Sadecki Belanger 71. I don't know how much improvement it's going to make. But again, they, they might end up with Jim Perry from the Minnesota Twins as the ace of their staff for Burt Blylevin. And that'll help them for a few years until Perry uh, starts to fall off. Next up, Padres. This is going to be a long, you know, I don't want to say rebuild. Like They're like the, the Padres and the Brewers are, have a similar progression. It's going to take a long time before they're competitive. But uh, you, you, if you have two cracks to improve Nate Colbert, you might as well take them. Um, what's interesting about Kirby is that he has a couple good years on the rotation before he gets traded to the Cincinnati Reds. So that could be improve him and then trade him, a sign and trade kind of thing. Seatle, another expansion team with a lot of options. None of these options is particularly significant though. Um, these are like minor players improving. Sometimes when you see a lot of yellow anyway, is that these guys are so bad here that of course you're gonna see improvement. Steve Klein though, is an excellent starting pitcher and he gets even better in 72. Pepitone has 
great defense at first base, power, the ability to hit left-handed pitching, and he can play outfield. And Pepitone moved between the Yankees and the Cubs. Here, Seattle, Seattle may want to say, hey, no, he's going to be a Mariner for quite a bit. Um, Sagi could become a setup man or closer in either 70 or 72. The other two guys aren't significant. All right, the Giants are getting older, and they're holding on to guys probably too long. Ron Hunt eventually ends up with the Expos, the career hit-by-pitch single-season holder. You might well let him go to the Expos and add Tito Fuentes to play second. Bonds in 71. If you're having trouble finding players, Bonds is a 1 minus 4 in center field and hits, you know, the similar amount of home runs, like 25, 30 home runs. Having a 1 with a minus 4 arm in center field over the course of a season would be pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Here's a, here's something big here. This should probably be orange as a mandatory pick, but I didn't make it orange because it seems like the Giants are committed to trading Gaylord Perry for Sam McDowell. And if the Indians want to bump up Gaylord Perry from his 69 card to 72, they can have at it. It's just that the Giants have had two years of the Gaylord Perry card and he's been getting hammered. <laughs> and it's been two years of Juan Marichal putting up Cy Young numbers and two years of Gaylord Perry getting knocked around, yet both Stratomatic cards have uh, ERAs below 2.50. So the Giants are feeling that they want to go righty-lefty at the top of the rotation. Marichal, the lefty McDowell, and they have a lefty lights-out closer in Steve Hamilton to be their core pitchers. St. Louis Cardinals, they are like the, uh, the odd man out in the National League North because the Reds and the Pirates are going to dominate that division. And it's going to be really, I mean, they really have to thread the needle and get a lot of luck. The best thing on this board is right there. Joe Torrey's 1971 card is going to be the first pick for them in the draft. They have to do that. Get it in there now. They don't want to wait two more years before that card's in the league. Get it in the league now because he hits 360 with it. Uh, Holtzman, that 72 Holtzman card would be a guy wearing a World Series ring for the Oakland A's. So that would be good to have. And Bob Gibson. If you consider that even as he was aging from, you know, 67 Gibson, the 69 Gibson card wasn't quite as good as the 67, 68 Gibson. But look at set by 72, three years in the future, he improves. If you improve 72 Gibson, Holtzman, Joe Torrey, you can put a little bit of a scare in a Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. We're getting near the end. We have two more teams, Texas and Toronto. Uh, the Rangers had a great season, a fun season in the Summer League. They exceeded expectations, but unfortunately the talent that they can pick from is terrible, to put it nicely, in these years. So they're almost in the same category as an expansion team where it says, yeah, let's make Mike Epstein even better. Dick Bosman, Daryl Knowles. Uh, you know, they may as well improve up. Uh, Ed Brinkman is a, a one in um, 69, I believe, even though his batting average, or he's a one in one of these years at short. So if you value defense, that would be the way to go. And lastly, the Blue Jays, the last expansion team. What's interesting here, as we conclude the video, is that um, Grisenda is a significant improvement. I mean, only because they're, his ERA is like uh, under two here. Gary Gentry, and boy, it's a real shame the Mets don't get to have Gary Gentry because he won a World Series game for the Mets against the Orioles. And his 69 and 71 cards are there to be improved as Toronto has a 70 card. Uh, the Mets can ask for him in a trade, but Toronto will say, no no way. We <laughs> we have to have somebody pitch for us, so they're not going to trade Gary Gentry back to the Mets. And they're going to have Doyle Alexander and Gary Gentry at the top of the rotation. Splitorf improves from 71 to 72. So they're going to have three good starters. Klimkowski and Grisendo will improve their bullpen. 
It's a no-win situation with Toronto because you're playing Baltimore, Boston, and the Yankees. You got no shot. But at least, you know, you can make these games competitive with good starting pitching and a good bullpen. The offense, there's no offensive players to improve. And it could be, this. they could have the worst offense in all of Stratomatic with a good pitching staff. And with that, we'll finish conclude the video. I hope you've enjoyed this analysis of the 384 players currently in the Carrier League and ways to improve them. Thanks for checking out the videos. We'll see you again soon.